Hope you guys have enjoyed the previous videos by learning in and out of collection framework. Now it's time to learn about another beautiful concepts and interesting topic in Java, which is multi-threading. I heard from many developers saying that multi-threading is one of the toughest topic in Java. The reason behind that is people think like, okay, it is developed by Oracle Java team where it is core level, the language level, and it is very difficult to understand the concepts, how it is actually working internally. So I have taken the toughest topic and split into multiple videos and want to go in and out of each concepts in multi-threading and I want to make you guys feel comfortable in terms of like before appear for any interview as well as coding and also I will go through with the real-time programming so you guys will understand where we really use multi-threading in our real-time programming in our client place. In this video, we are going to talk about what is yield method in Java and why do we need this yield method and what is the purpose behind the scene, why the Oracle developer team has created this method and how we should use it as a programmer. And also we are going to go uh, get in and out of, uh, you know, internal works of how it actually works. And end of this video, I want to make sure you guys get in and out of this concept uh, so that like you guys can relate by real time programming by also I want to explain with a real time uh, example so you guys can correlate with that and you guys will get in and out of it and uh, without any further delay let's get started uh, the yield method before we start with what is yield method and all those topics I want to start with a simple uh, real time on example so you guys will remember whenever someone asks about yield method so let's take in a quick example um, let's say you are going for a grocery store and you are uh, getting some uh, items from the grocery store and let's say uh, there are like 10 counters out of 10 counters let's say all the counters are closed basically you are going at the last minute uh, before the store closing and uh, they're actually almost done uh, they are going to about to close the store and basically uh, there is only one counter where they are actually making the billing uh, where you are going into the queue and where you are standing in the line and you see that there is one person already before you guys uh, before you reach that person that person is already talking to the cashier and actually they're talking about something else without making real-time uh, transaction or anything like that right so then you may be thinking like what this guy is doing for some time so you are waiting for like let's say five minutes ten minutes then again you keep on thinking like what this guy is doing then you don't have any clue whether this guy is doing something real transaction or whether they're simply talking uh, unnecessary items or unnecessary things right so then you might be calling the store manager hello boss uh, see this guy is uh, not even moving on so i'm not sure like well, how long i should wait so can you please help me in, you know, getting this thing, like uh, getting the clear thing, clear, clearing the line. So that guy say, you know, I don't know, sir, because this guy came in first. So this guy has to be served. Then you will be served based on the you know first come first service. So it makes sense, right? But uh, if you think, let's say you are waiting for, let's say 20 minutes, one or two hour, but still this guy is not even moving. So you might be thinking what is going on, right? So basically, uh, ideally what it should happen is when someone the person who is actually standing before you who is actually making some conversation with the cashier who is not allowing the chance for others right so that person has to keep on checking others let's say in the line if anyone is waiting in the line uh, so that like i can make you know either i can give them the chance and then again i can come back in the same line right that's how they have to do so this is a real-time example so now i want to talk about the same thing in threading concept so whenever ask anyone uh you know anyone about like a ask you guys about yield method you guys can think about the same thing so yield is nothing but like giving others chance think in a simple way so in threading concept there is a yield method so yield is a method in java in the thread class basically in thread class we have a yield method without any arguments so yield method basically it is the current executing thread will pass for some time and give chance to others other threads with some with more priority so what are i'm saying here like the example right i want to let here so let's say you have a thread, right? So the thread, the person who is actually standing before you, who is actually making some conversation with the cashier is a thread. Let's say that is a one thread. Let's say that is a T1 and you are a T2, okay? So the T1 has to keep on checking in the line if anyone is waiting in the line for, you know, uh, moving forward. So what the T1 has to do is, T1 has to keep on checking the thread, like any threads are waiting with the same priority. Let's say if, uh, if more priority is there, then this guy has to, the, the person has to give a chance. So let's say you have a T1, the guy who is actually talking to the cashier and you are the thread T2. So let's say you have more priority than the thread, right? T1. Then T1 has to keep on checking while T1 is checking if any thread is waiting in the line, which is having more priority than the current executing thread, which is T1. Then T1 has to give a chance for other threads to get executed. So this is the simple logic. So what is mean is the current executing thread, which is the person who is actually talking to the cashier will pass for some time and give chance to other threads. So he has to keep on checking in the line and then he has to give a chance to other thread, which is like, you know, the person who is standing behind 
uh, you know behind the line right so and give with more priority if the person is having more priority then the person has to give the chance otherwise he can continue whatever he is doing so i have written a program here just to explain it but anyhow i am going to execute the same program in the uh, eclipse then you will be get in and out of it so this is a simple program where basically you have a public child thread class basically this is a thread class where i am saying extend thread so here i am using uh, extend thread logic so here i am just saying extend thread so inside that i have a run method so this one we call it as a job of a thread right so whatever we writing um, job of a thread isn't it so whatever we are writing inside the run method is nothing but job of a thread right so this is a threaded class and this is my main class so just say public class demo so inside i have public static void main main class main method so inside that whenever uh, as we know that in java every java class has at least one thread which is main thread this is main program so we have a main thread so this one this line you have a main thread created already by the jvm so this line has been executed by the main thread isn't it so when this line what you are doing is we are creating a object of this class let's say child thread class child thread class t1 is equal to new child thread class of right so what we are doing is um i am creating a thread here like t1 so here i am actually instantiating the thread right and then i am actually starting here t1 dot start so here these two lines are executed by the main thread only one thread which is a main thread now when you, whenever you call t1 dot start so it will come here right start method internally calls the thread methods run method that will be overwritten here so basically you are writing here the logic the log job job of the thread right so here it will come so here it is going to check for int i equal to 0 i less than 4 i plus plus so you are writing some program basically you are writing a logic saying uh, you know uh, for loop inside that you are just printing child thread and then you are saying thread dot yield so this yield method actually presents inside thread class so uh, basically this is a static method that is why you are uh, directly calling this method without creating an object of thread class you are directly calling with the help of class name right that's what the beauty of a static keyword right so thread dot yield so what does it mean so here when this child thread actually is executing this uh, job at the time it is going to check so yield means it is going to check if someone is waiting in the line or not so who is waiting in this line here in our program so far we have only one thread like two sorry two threads right at this line so one thread is a child thread another one is main thread so it is going to check the child thread is going to check if any other threads is if if any other threads are waiting in the execution queue so here the another thread is nothing but main thread so after this line two two threads will be there right one is main thread another one is child thread so here this particular piece of code will be has to be executed by the main thread only right because the child thread if i say thread dot yield it is going to check if any threads are waiting in the queue with the same priority or more priority if it is same priority it won't consider it it will execute as it is it won't give a chance if it is any thread is having more priority then it is going to give a chance here but now if you see thread dot yield so this child thread is going to see if anyone is waiting yes main thread is waiting so main thread has to be executed once the main thread gets executed then again this child thread will get a chance right to get completed so this is the beauty of yield method so why the oracle developer team has created this yield method in the threading concept the reason is that when multiple threads are running right and if one thread is hanging or if one thread is keep on doing for let's say 10 hours but without giving a chance for other threads to get executed then that is where we should know whether that real that thread is really doing like uh, doing a program execution or it's got hang or something right so that is the reason they have created like this so basically whenever you use yield method it is this thread the current executing thread the current executing thread is nothing but the child thread so wherever you write the yield method you can write here you can write there anywhere you can write but the thing is you have to understand that wherever you write this yield method that particular piece of line was executed by whatever thread let's say here the child thread right this current executing thread has to uh, check if any other threads are waiting in the queue if it is there then it is going to give a chance let that complete it and then it will get a chance so this is how it will work so the expected output will be let's say here comes here t1 dot start so comes here so it has to execute four times right but what it is doing is it is uh, printing first time like system dot outer print and child thread so one time it printed child thread and then it says okay yield so since this thread is executed by the yield method it is calling yield method it is going to check here so okay so the main method will be the main thread will be executed here so main thread is executed three times and then again it is getting a chance so again it will print uh, you know child thread for like next next three times or four times whatever it is right but this actually 
uh you know like this yield method is not like a, a very powerful uh, method basically it is a native method so in that case like native means like it is not written by java uh, at least it will be uh, depends on uh, the executing uh, platform also so the current executing platform let's say you are running in a windows machine or unix machine or linux machine the particular version of uh, platform has to also support it like the job scheduler which is like a thread scheduler who is actually going to execute the thread has to support this uh, logic so output will be different because uh, not all the platform supports this one so basically the idea behind why they have created this yield method by the java developers like the oracle team is uh, this one so let me summarize this one so yield method is uh, static method in thread class and it has been created by oracle developers team as a developer we have to simply execute it or simply use it so we we should know what it actually does so that like so basically in your child class you are writing a run method right inside the run method you are writing a job and basically in your main class you are creating a object for the child thread class and then you are starting the thread so while you are starting the thread t1.start it actually executes the run method inside whatever you are overwritten here and inside here like you are having on for loop it's just a simple example so basically whatever you do here inside like if you say thread.yield so the current executing thread which is nothing but the child thread is going to check if anyone is waiting in the line yes there is a main thread which is executing as is, is waiting in the line so it is going to give a chance for other threads to get executed so that is where it is going to check okay so main thread will get executed completely and then the same child thread will get chance so this is the way the yield method works if anyone ask you uh, in interview or any program or anywhere so if you guys don't know what is yield method so just think about the example which i have explained the real time example so basically you are going to the grocery store and there is another person who is actually standing before you guys and they are like uh, talking to the cashier for a very long time and they are not giving a chance for this so yield means giving a chance for this so this is a very simple way of you know uh, correlate your uh, Uh, reality with your uh, threading concept so i hope you guys have understood this concept let me go and write execute the same program in my eclipse and i want to show you guys the output here is the practical implementation of understanding how the yield method works in java so what i did here is i created a class called child thread class which actually extends the thread class basically what i did here is i created a threaded class which means nothing but a yeah, class is said to be a threaded class which means with whenever it extends thread class right So since I extend thread class, I am overwriting the run method, which is nothing but job of a thread. So this is actually going to be executed by the thread, which is we are going to create it. So inside this, I am just putting one for loop where basically for four times, actually it has to execute child thread like that. And then I am having a uh, line where I said like thread dot yield of. Let me get into detail after this uh, high level overline. So what I did another one is I create another. method uh, class called main class which is like main method wherein i am creating an object of this thread class which is a threaded class called child threaded class right t1 and then i am starting a thread so before we get into this in our theoretical session we have seen what is yield method in java and why do we need it as you guys know already yield is a native method in java which is like can be used whenever you feel that a particular thread is not able to get a chance to execute right so it all depends on use case whenever you want to uh, you know think about of this particular situation and you have to uh, write this particular uh, method it depends on how you are going to execute the particular uh, flow of execution right so what i did here is a simple uh, way of understanding here is i am creating an object of the threaded class which is nothing but child thread class t1 is equal to new child thread class of and then using this one t1 dot start so basically i am starting a thread right so what it actually do is it is going to call the run method right which is nothing but the now argument run method of this particular class and it is going to execute this would have to execute but if you guys think about here in our previous videos we have seen how the threads are getting created how the threads are getting executed so whenever uh, whenever you write a java class whenever you have a, a method for every each and every method jvm by default it creates a thread for executing the particular piece of method right so here it is a main method meaning like jvm creates a thread called main thread which is responsible to create or execute this piece of codes inside the main method right so here line number 14 is executed by the main thread line number 15 is executed by the main thread so right now we have two threads here because we are actually starting a thread right so at the line number 16 we have two threads so one is um, you know uh, sorry line number 15 we have two threads which is main thread and thread t1 so main thread is responsible to execute the remaining piece of code inside the main method and t1 is the main responsible to execute the piece of code within this uh, no argument run method isn't it so 
let me go and execute this program and you will understand how, how it actually works okay here you go so what we are trying to do here is i am creating a thread called t1 and i am starting the thread so ideally it is going to execute this one first so it has to execute four times right four times this uh, you know the child thread child thread child thread like that right but what happens here is um it is going to execute first like system dot out dot print enough child thread and then i am making a call to yield method so yield is a native method which means like you know uh, each and every underlying os has to support i am using mac os uh, it looks like it is not supporting the yield method here but when you write your actual coding in your real time uh, the jvm like you know linux or any os so that should support so what the purpose of the yield method here is that so here the t2 is the one which is going to execute this piece of code let's assume this piece of code is executed forever and meaning that then this main thread is going to execute this piece of code right but since the t1 is to keep on running this one and it is not giving back the control back here and meaning like the main thread is waiting for the t1 to complete right so in this case what it has to do is always the t1 whenever it is trying to execute its job it has to check is there any other thread is waiting in the queue to execute its job if it is like that then i am giving their chance right so that is the reason you are saying thread dot yield so here the thread means the current thread which is nothing but this piece of code is executed by the thread t1 and that t1 dot yield means it is giving a chance for other thread to execute before it wants to execute so and which means like it will execute one time child thread and then it is giving a chance here so four times this has to execute the main thread and then followed by three times of child thread since this child uh, the priorities are not um, uh, uh, supported by the mac os here that is the reason it is not giving the right uh, answers but if you guys see here this is makes sense right if you guys see here now i execute it so first time it execute child thread and then it is not uh, going through the remaining loops because it is giving the chance right thread dot yield so it is checking okay main thread is there so main thread is executing this time this particular piece of code for four times so main thread is comes for like four times and then followed by three times of child thread so this is how actually the yield method works so yield method is basically um people will get confused why we need to use yield right so uh, even if in interviewer ask you like why we need to use yield method and where you will use it so you always think about the practical scenario which i explained in our previous you know the theoretical session basically you are waiting for uh, someone to move on but they are not keep moving on and uh, you are not giving getting a chance right in this case you have to always check whether the particular uh, in the line anyone is waiting or not right so here if you guys see here the t1 dot start so which is like a t1 thread has been started and that is responsible to execute this piece of code so here when i say thread dot yield it is nothing but t1 is checking is there anyone is waiting in the line or not is there any is there anyone waiting in the execution flow or not so yes we are having a main thread has to execute this flow so actually main thread is waiting that is reason whenever you say thread dot yield which means t1 thread is checking if anyone is waiting in the execution flow yes main thread so that is why it is giving a chance for main thread to complete and then followed by the child thread execution which is nothing but t1 so this is how actually the yield method works it is very simple to understand but people thinks it's very complex and logic it all about depends on how or the way how you understanding uh, learning it so i hope like i have make you guys very comfortable by giving with us some practical example so that you guys won't forget if you guys uh, have any question about this concept or this program please post your comments we will uh, catch up in the comment section guys thank you bye bye i hope you guys have understood the concept very clearly but still if you guys have any questions or any clarifications required please post your comments in the comment section and i will be more than happy to assist keep watching all our videos there are a lot more videos to come and if you guys like this video please hit the thumbs up button and also subscribe to the channel and share with your friends don't forget to hit the bell icon thanks for watching i will see you in the next interesting video guys